Hi, welcome to the lecture on neuron abstraction and signal functions. So what is a neuron? Neuron is considered to be the basic building block in a neural network. So what is a neural network? A neural network is an aggregation of neurons that work together towards the same goal which basically performs a given task and the objective is to complete the task with the least possible error. So this is a graphical representation of a neural network. So you will have the input layer, the hidden layer and the output layer. So if you look at the graphical representation of the neural network, the neurons are otherwise termed as the nodes and each one will correspond to one unique node in the graph. So this graphical representation is not simply used to have an easy way to look at the network, but you know at the fundamental level uh, we would be able to compute the operations that take place in a more practical manner. So this slide basically shows how a biological neuron differs from an artificial neuron. So the biological neuron basically has uh, you know something called the soma, axon and other aspects. Then you have the artificial neuron with the input layer, the hidden layer and the output layer. So if you look at the different parts of a biological neuron or an artificial neuron to be very specific, so you have the collector, the activator and the distributor. So if you talk of what is an artificial neural network, you know an artificial neural network otherwise termed as an ANN is very powerful, strong enough so that a highly complicated ML technique could probably mimic the human brain and it will also probably say how it functions. So if you look into the human brain, otherwise called the biological neuron, uh, which basically consists of you know millions of neurons interconnected with each other via what is called the axon and you know the pass electrical signal from one layer to another and that is what is called the synapse. You know this is how we humans learn things. So whenever we see, hear, feel and you know think you know this impulse or the synapse is you know fired from one neuron to another and you know this will basically enable us to learn, remember and memorize things you know that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and this basically works right from day one since we were born. So if you look into the parts of the neuron, the first one is called the collector. As the term indicates, its basic function is to aggregate the incoming connections from other networks. If you talk of a biological neuron, it is known as the synapse connection. And you know the mathematical equivalent for aggregation is summation. So when I say summation it's just not mathematical sum but it's called a weighted sum where you know each connection will have a different importance to the collector. So when you talk of an activator which is another important part of a neuron the activation of the signal that is aggregated in the collector is the process occurring inside the body. So it is still not clear what is the better representation for that process and in deep learning you know it is modeled by the so-called activation function. This is another important term in a neural network an ANN called the activation function. What is this activation function? This function basically will vary in form but you know you can simply apply it to a signal passed by the collector and most of the functions are basically non-linear since the activator is the only part of the neuron where we could probably introduce the capability of learning and you know 
most of the real world scenarios basically requires the use of a non-linear function. So the other one is called the distributor, another important part of a neuron. So as the name indicates, a distributor will collect signal after the activator and sends it with equal intensity to the rest of the neurons. So when you look at the graphical representation of a neural network, it means to every single neuron in the next layer of the stacked neurons, and that is the job of what you term it as a distributor and an important part of a neuron. So basically, uh, you know, this is how a neural network looks like. So the input might be a dog and a cat that goes as an input. Then you have a set of hidden layers. Then you have a set of output layers. So basically neural network has two key terms which you might be familiar of and you call it as the training and testing. So you give a set of input, train the neural network, then you give an unknown input and then probably you know that's called testing which probably needs to do a correct prediction yeah that is the basic logic behind a neural network so when you do the training and testing you can do it probably uh, the ideal thing is 50 50 but most of the time we even use 60 40 70 30 and so on where you know 70 percent should be the training data and 30 percent should be the testing data and you know both needs to be mutually exclusive when I say mutually exclusive, the training data, you know, and the testing data, you know, cannot overlap. And when you look at an artificial neuron, and you know, this is the basic processing unit of a neural network, you know, it has a set of synapses that are collecting links, you know, and each link has something called a weight determined by W, 1, 2, 3, up to N. Then I have an adder function. An adder function is nothing but a linear combiner you know that basically computes what is called a weighted sum then I have something called an activation function otherwise called the squashing function and that basically limits you know the amplitude of the output represented by y and the adder function is represented by u so this is the pictorial representation of an artificial neuron where you have a set of input signals numbered from x1 x2 up to xn W1, W2 up to Wn basically denotes the synaptic weights. You know, then you pass it into a summing function and you have something called a bias B. And then again, you pass that output into an activation function and at the end, you get the output Y. You know, this is basically the structure of an artificial neuron. So when you probably want to design a neural network, you know, you have a set of weights W, set of biases B, and you have F, called the transfer function and you know the transfer function basically is to make the error as low as possible so the basic objective is to choose the weights the bias and the transfer function and then give it to a training network and then do the testing and obviously as you might be aware MATLAB has certain functions that can automatically do this training as well so when you look at the activation function you have something called the step function then you have this sine function, then you have the sigmoid, yeah? So when you look at the step function, step function is equal to one. If x greater than or equal to t, l zero, then you have the sine function, sine of x equal to plus one. If x greater than or equal to zero, else minus one. Then you have the sigmoidal function, which is one by one plus e power minus x. So when you look at the activation functions, you have the threshold, the piecewise linear and the sigmoidal. So what are activation functions and how does it get used in a neural network model? So when you look at the transfer function or the activation function, it is nothing but, I know it's something like an attachment between two neural networks. So these activation functions are important for the ANN to learn and understand any kind of a complex pattern that you introduce. So basically, the main objective is to introduce nonlinear properties into the network. So, you know, the main purpose is to convert an input signal into an artificial neural network and then to an output signal. So the output signal uh, now is used as the input to the next layer and so on, you know. So 
This nonlinear activation function that we are probably going to use will help the model to understand the complexity and this basically is responsible for giving accurate results as well. So there is another obvious question why you cannot do it without activating the input signal. So what will happen if you do not apply the activation function then the output signal would simply be a linear function. So when I say a linear function, a linear function is nothing but a polynomial of degree 1. So a linear equation is easy to solve, you know, but what will happen? The complexity is very, very limited and, you know, uh, it has very, very less power to solve any kind of complex problems. So a neural network without an activation function would simply resemble a linear regression model and you know that has very limited power and you know it does not perform well most of the times. Again you know if you do not use an activation function what will happen the neural network will not be able to learn and you know it will not be able to model any kind of complicated data like videos, images, audio, speech etc. So this basically drives you know the key importance of the activation function. So there are basically two different types of activation function. The first one is linear and the second one is nonlinear. So when I talk of a linear function, a linear or an identity activation function is nothing but a line, you know, it's then it's called linear. You know, then this output will not be confined to any range. I can simply write the equation as f of x equals x, where the range ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. It doesn't help with the complexity or various parameters of usual data. When you look at the step function, step function is one of the simplest kind of activation functions. So where I have a threshold value and the value of this, you know, net input say y is greater than the threshold, then the neuron is activated. For example, f of x equal to 1 if x greater than or equal to 0 and this is what I term it as a step function. So why do I need a non-linear activation function? A non-linear function has degree more than 1 and you know you have, it has a curvature that you plot on a non-linear function. So when you look at a neural network model and you probably represent almost anything and any arbitrary function that maps inputs to the outputs. So obviously using a nonlinear activation function, you will be able to generate, you know, nonlinear mappings from the inputs to the outputs. So this basically drives the need for a nonlinear activation function. So this is how a nonlinear activation function looks like. It obviously is easy to model, to generalize or adapt with a variety of data and to differentiate between the different outputs. And you know, it could be uh, you know differential so where the change in the y-axis with respect to the change in the x-axis and that is what I term it as a slope and the function is obviously differentiable which means I will be able to find the slope of the sigmoid curve the function is said to be monotonic in nature when I say monotonic it is either entirely non-increasing or non-decreasing and this is what is called a monotonic function so when you look at a nonlinear activation function, you know, basically they are divided on the basis of the range or the curves. So one is called the sigmoid. The sigmoid function basically, you know, looks like an S shape. And basically the range is between 0 to 1. And, you know, this sigmoidal function has a very specific use, you know, where the models uh, have to the predict the probability of the output is possible you know then you can probably use the sigmoidal function so the sigmoidal function probability lies in the range of 0 to 1 so as far as possible this could be the right choice so the logistic sigmoid function can cause a neural network to get stuck at the training time you know and that is one major problem of the sigmoidal function so what could be the problem? Obviously, you know, sigmoidal functions have what is called the vanishing gradient problem because they have 
ranges in the zero, range 0 to 1. Optimization becomes difficult. Output is not zero centered. So they saturate and they kill the gradient and they have very, very slow convergence because of all of these problems, sigmoidal function, you know, could not be used effectively. So what is the alternate? The alternate is called the hyperbolic tangent, otherwise called the tan h. So it has a very specific mathematical formula with ranges in the range, you know, minus one to one. So the output obviously can lie in the range minus one to one. Optimization is basically easier here. So this tan h function, otherwise called the hyperbolic tangent, is preferable over sigmoid. Still this problem of, you know, vanishing gradients exists in the hyperbolic tangent. So what is the solution? So we go for what is called the ReLU, we call RELU, so otherwise called the Rectified Linear Unit. This RELU has six times improvement in convergence than the tan h. So the function is very simply written as max of 0, x. That is if x is less than 0, r of x is 0. If x is greater than or equal to 0, r of x equals x. And once you could probably write the function RELU like this, this function basically rectifies the vanishing gradient problem. The only limitation of this RELU is that, you know, this could only be used within the hidden layers of the neural network. Certain times, you know, this function could be so fragile during training and sometimes it might die. So it can cause a weight update which will make it never activate on any data point again. So what will happen? You know, this RELU has one simple problem where, you know, this could cause what is called, you know, a dead neuron. So we have something called the leaky RELU. This is a slight improvement version over the RELU. So instead of defining the function as zero for x less than zero, I take a small linear component of x, you know, and then say, you know, f of x equals a into x if x is less than 0. Else, x, you know, I introduce a small slope to keep the updates alive so that this leaky RELU basically solves the dead neuron problem by introduction of a parameter called a, and this a is a small slope that will basically keep the updates alive. So this lecture basically gives you an overall understanding of the neuron abstraction and the various signal functions, the key advantages of what is, you know, a linear function and nonlinear function, what is a sigmoidal function, what is hyperbolic function, what is RELU and how do you solve the problem of RELU by using what is called the leaky RELU? So this completes an overall understanding of the neuron abstraction and signal functions. So hope to meet you again in another video lecture on neural networks. So thank you once again.